hello, good morning, or good afternoon, depending on where you're joining us from. You're very welcome to our third Startup Women webinar of 2024, Taking the Fear Out of Bank Loans and Debt. I'm Isabel Nolan. I'm the Director of Programs at Startup Canada. To begin, I would like to acknowledge that the land on which I'm on today is located on the unceded and traditional territories of the Musqueam, Squamish and Tsleil-Waututh Nations, also known as Vancouver. I also acknowledge with respect the diverse histories of uh, all Indigenous people and encourage you to take a moment to acknowledge the traditional territory that you're residing on today. Um, we welcome you all to connect in the chat. Make sure you're sending your messages to everyone in the room. Zoom tends to default it to only send it to the hosts and panelists. So just make sure you're, you're adjusting that to everyone so that you can connect with everyone that's in the room today. And today's session uh, is being recorded and we'll add it to our YouTube channel afterwards as a living resource. So a little bit about Startup Canada, if you're not familiar with us, we're a national nonprofit. We're the gateway to Canada's entrepreneurial ecosystem. We're here to connect entrepreneurs like yourselves with the support community and tools that they need to build a successful business in Canada. And since launching in 2012, Startup Canada has grown to support more than 130,000 entrepreneurs annually and an ever-growing community of ecosystem partners from coast to coast to coast. And dedicated to showing up for women all year round, Startup Women is an annual program, annual free program uh, that offers support to early stage women identifying entrepreneurs across Canada through topic focused webinars like this, industry advisory circles and meetings with startup women leaders. We know that when you support women, you truly do support a nation. Before we get started, we've got a short message from one of our co-presenting partners, the Scotiabank Women Initiative that will play now. The Scotiabank Women Initiative is dedicated to your success on your terms. I'm shaping our industry's vision for the future. I can expand my business without borrowing from my family. I know I can face anything thanks to my network. I'm ready for my next chapter. I'm inspiring future leaders. I'm making sure my family's future is secure. Define your success and we'll help you achieve it. With unbiased access to capital and tailored solutions, bespoke specialized education and holistic advisory services and mentorship. Join our community of women today, the Scotiabank Women Initiative. And uh, another thank you to our other co-presenting partner, UPS, our program partners, EDC, MasterCard, Wisebase, Ella, and our fantastic community of ecosystem partners. And we'll add a full list of them into the chat. Um, I'm loving to see everyone uh, in the webinar chat already um, introducing yourselves, telling us where you're from. We've got people from Whitehorse, um, Pickering, Edmonton, Winnipeg, um, Gatineau. It's fantastic to see Montreal. There, it's fantastic to see so many folks from across uh, the country. Um, so today's conversation um, will really focus on demystifying the complexities of a loan application. And um, specifically, we are joined today by um, two team members from um, the WEOC team to talk about their national loan program, as well as an entrepreneur that has gone through that program. And um, so we'll sort of take you through the various different aspects of um, you know, the eligibility of this program, how can you apply, who can apply, um, and what that what that process looks like. Um, as well as, you know, some some tips and tricks, do's and don'ts for any other loans that um, perhaps you are considering to um, apply for. We have prepared quite a few questions for our panelists. However, if you have any questions, if you could write them into the Q&A box on the bottom function part of your screen, um, and we'll do our best to answer them live for you. So without further ado, I'm very honored to introduce our speakers for, for today. We have Heather Sadawi, who is the loans manager at WIOC, Berlin Michel, who is the loans advisor, advising specialist at WIOC, and Jessica Bossman, who is the co-founder and COO of Double. Welcome. So um, I think best to um, do a little short introduction of yourselves. Um, so Heather and Berlin, I'm going to pass it to you first. 
um, to maybe tell us a little bit about each of yourselves and then maybe you can go into who WEOC is and what is the National Loan Programme. Sure, thank you, Isabel. Um, so as you mentioned, uh, my name is Heather and I am the loans manager with WEOC. Uh, WEOC is also a national nonprofit organization uh, that works in um, kind of as an umbrella organization for women's enterprise centers across the country. So we support our members um, by giving advisors that work with entrepreneurs, uh, networking opportunities, um, access to library of tools and resources and participation in different courses. Uh, and then about two years ago, we launched this national loan program. So we are um, working directly with entrepreneurs on this program as well. Um, and so uh, I've I've been with WEOC for about two years. Uh, prior to WEOC, I worked at a Manitoba credit union for about 17 years. So I was working in small business lending, commercial lending, um, and um, launched this loan program. We have a team of uh, five, I think, um, loans team members. So Berlin is one of them. And uh, I'll let her just give herself a little intro as well. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Berlin Michel. I'm the loan uh, advising specialist. So what I do, I help entrepreneurs um, when, to help them to be ready to apply for the loan in terms of business plan, financial statements. I have more than 15 years experience in the financial industry. I use to work with entrepreneurs and doing analysis as well with them, uh, with, their, with their financial statements. And I started with WIOC at the beginning of the year, of this year. Fantastic. I'm delighted to have you both here uh, with us. Um, Jessica, I'd love to pass over to you to do a little short introduction of yourself and tell us a little bit about Double. Thank you, Isabel. It's a pleasure to be here. So hi, everyone. My name is Jess, and I'm the co-founder and COO of Double. And Double is the first to market made-to-measure bra that can be both fitted and ordered directly from your smartphone. So it is truly our mission to kind of lead the future of retail in which we believe will be sizeless and free women from being placed into arbitrary buckets of letters and uh, numbers that are, you know, putting us in boxes when it comes to sizing. And we really think that clothes should fit the body, not the other way around. And we are a WEOC loan recipient, so really excited to be here and uh, provide some more information to fellow founders and startup owners. Fantastic. Thank you so much for being here. So um, Heather and Berlin, I'd love to go back to um, so, some more details around um, this, this loan program. Can you tell us what the parameters are to this loan? Sure. So um, just a bit of background. Uh, this, this loan program is a Government of Canada funded initiative. So um, they developed the Women's Entrepreneurship Strategy uh, probably 20, 2021, I believe, 22 in the budget there was um, Women's Entrepreneurship Loan Fund. Uh, so WIOC was the recipient of these funds to launch a loan program across the country, as well as a few other providers as well. So um, our loans are up to $50,000 for women entrepreneurs. And they're aimed at um, the programs aimed at reaching those who may have a harder time accessing financing at traditional financial institutions, uh, banks or credit unions. So um, it's essentially fifty thousand dollar maximum. Um, we offer loans for terms up to five years, but they're flexible within that. So it could be a one year loan, two, three, whatever you need. Um, and then there's no minimum amount as well. So we can go um, loans as low as one thousand dollars, five thousand dollars, something like that, if you need. Uh, we do have a variety of interest rates. So the interest rates are based on um, kind of the experience level of your business, as well as any <laughs> collateral that might be provided. Um, so there's a range, but it's sort of the equivalent um, up to prime plus four would be the highest range of that. And then um, in terms of fees, there's an administration fee of 1% uh, that's only applicable if your loan is approved. So there's no upfront uh, application fees or anything like that. Uh, so those are the basic you know, um, pieces, but we can get into more with the specific questions if anyone has at the end. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Heather. And yeah, it's great to kind of outline um, that there's uh, there's less barriers, if you will, um, with, with this loan program than yet, like you said, with, with most um, traditional uh, loans that folks might see out there. Um, and then when it comes to who can apply for, the, for this loan, can you walk us through... Um, you know, what's the eligibility criteria that someone would need to meet um, when applying? Sure, Berlin, do you want to answer this? I'll share um, I'll share a screen as well that just has a bit of oh, information. Okay. 
Okay, okay very good. I don't know if you can guys can see that. Yes. Perfect. So in loan for loan eligibility, uh, you will see the list. So first of all, it has to be majority woman owned, at least fifty one percent. We can accept fifty fifty joint ownership with a spouse. Also, you need not to earn more than two million in gross revenue per year. And also for startup business, they will need to provide a complete business plan with financial projections for two years. As existing business, they can provide financial statements for the last two years with financial projections. And uh, also uh, to be able, eligible to do the application, the, the entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs will be at least 19 years of age, Canadian citizen or permanent resident and residing in Canada. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, Akma, I'm actually seeing a question come in um, from one of the points that you um, uh, talked about there, Berlin, very quickly. Yeah. Anne is wondering, what about a 50-50 split with a direct family member? Would that work the same as with a 50-50 with split with a spouse or does it still need to be 51%? Usually it's 50, 50% 50 with a spouse, but maybe Heather, there could be, is there any exceptions? Yeah, I mean, generally speaking, it, it would be majority. Um, we say that we give the exception for a spouse just because they're generally living in the same household. Um, and so it's sort of um, uh, in terms of household expenses and things that are going on on the personal side, um, they're often shared assets. So it'd have to be um, uh, like, it's something we can look at, but it's generally, we want to stick to the 51% uh, for the most part, but there's always room to kind of, um, you know, take a look at individual case by case basis. So. Wonderful. And I hope that answers your question. And yeah, like, you know, it never hurts to, to at least reach out and, and apply and, and, and just have a conversation at the very least. Um, great. And then, yeah, I know, I know you have the side up here. So talking about um, what this loan can and, and cannot be, be used for would be great to go through. And there's also eligibility. And to what is eligible or not eligible, you, you will see on the screen there's a list. Uh, I'm not going to go necessarily through all, the, all of it, but the most popular, for example, for eligible, uh, we do work in capital, uh, capital assets. And in terms of in, what is not eligible, uh, we don't do goodwill, we don't do capital expenditure or real, real property. We don't do franchise fees as well, management fees. Yeah, so these are probably some of the most most common um, um, sort of questions we'll get about these these items. And um, <clears throat> one in particular is a the uh, purchase of an existing business. That's often a question that folks ask us. And so, um, in it, in and of itself, it's not um, an issue as long as the uh, the items that are involved in the purchase of the business fall onto the eligible side, right? So usually within a business purchase, there'll be a breakdown of what is um, part of the part of the purchase agreement. Uh, if there's some equipment in there, if there's some sort of um, inventory in there, we can generally find a way to make it uh, covered. But if there's if you're just paying for the goodwill, the name, and the you know the shareholder the the shares. Um, that would be ineligible. So it always, again, depends on the breakdown of what you're purchasing when you do go through that uh, that phase. So I'll just stop the share here because I think we'll go back to... Okay, that's good. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much for, for going through that. And also for everyone that's watching today, um, uh, the WEOC team have very kindly sent us over the uh, a full presentation that um, they've put together. So we will share that with you afterwards as well. So if there's any specific details that you feel like you might have missed when they're sharing their screen or or when we're talking about it today, we'll send it over to you um, so that you'll have everything um, that you need if you are curious about um, applying for this loan. Alrighty, I, I'm also seeing some questions come in from attendees and there's some really great questions. If I see a question that's similar to one that I'll ask, I've kind of copied and pasted it to weave into my question. So we will uh, we will definitely get to you. Um, so Jess, back to, to you. You are um, a recipient of uh, this loan program yourself and your co-founder. Um, can you you know, there's there's so many avenues of fundings that business owners can go down. Um, so what factors did you consider when evaluating the different forms of funding? Um, and then why did you decide to go for a loan rather than another? 
Yeah, that's a great question. So when we think about the types of funding that are out there, obviously there's non-dilutive, which kind of encapsules debt financing and grant, like anything that's grant related. And then there's equity financing. Um, so funny enough, when we were first thinking about this, we had initially leaned more towards equity financing. However, it was a challenging market for uh, fundraising at the time. And then also, as I'm sure most of the people on this call know, as a female founder, it can be more challenging to raise. And especially when you're in early stages, when you don't have as much traction. So this was pre-launch for us. Um, and we had essentially been bootstrapping almost by default at this point. And then as we got more and more into the business, we felt more cognizant around the ownership piece of our business and not wanting to give ownership away. So just, I guess, in case anybody on this call is unaware, grant, if you get, if you get grant money, it's like completely no strings attached. You owe nobody anything back. So in my books, grant financing is the number one type of financing. However, it's, un it's very uncertain. So it's always great to do lots of grant applications. However, you can't guarantee on that money and same with pitch competitions, for example. And then below that is debt financing. So if you have a line of credit, if you can get a line of credit through your, you know, business bank, that's great. Something that I got advice on earlier on was if anyone is still, you know, in their corporate job, um, try to take out a line of credit through your personal account while you still have, you know, monthly income coming in, you'll be approved for a larger amount because again, it's really notorious to get, you know, denied as a business, especially if you're pre-revenue because you're such a high risk. So that's something we did earlier on. And then kind of the next phase other than, you know, credit cards would be debt financing. So there's a few loan programs that um, help female founders, but I found we ought to be like a particularly great one where um, I see there's a question about timeline in the chat. I think it took us two months, maybe just under from like our application to actually getting the funds in our bank account. So it was pretty fast. And then when it comes to debt financing, like we really like it because I think it really allows you to get to the operational stage of your business and then get to a point where you can hopefully be sustaining yourself organically, but you're not giving up a percentage of your business. And if you do equity fundraising earlier on, like at the end of the day, your business is going to be valued at a lower number because you're not very far along. You don't ne necessarily have the traction that you want. And then you're giving away more and, you know, founders are putting in lots of hours and it can be um, difficult to give up large percentages of your business. So for us, it's always been really like the goal is eventually to do equity fundraising, but we think of that as, you know, once we have traction, we're raising from a place of strength, we have a really great foundation and that way we're going to skyrocket. But debt financing is just like so helpful to get over like those initial hurdles of like bringing your product to life, going through R&D or like whatever kind of that project is. So that's the way we evaluate the three and us as a business, we're just always applying for grants. We look at the different types of debt financing and making sure they're a good partner. And we also was really great in really seeing our vision and understanding our business and working with us. Um, I found like traditional banks to be quite cold and they look at you a much more like a number. Um, so that's, yeah, that's the way we've gone about it. And then uh, the third bucket for us will be um, raising through investors in the future. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Jess, for, for taking us through that. And I'm seeing quite a few follow-up uh, questions come through either for yourself or for um, Heather and Berlin. Um, and I have someone asking there, and I see that Jenna already replied, but um, I think it definitely is worth mentioning just in case there's anyone else wondering what debt financing is and equity um, fundraising is. So debt fund um Fundraising is when uh, you're you're essentially borrowing money. So typically, it's from um, a, a bank or some 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 other um, lender uh, institution, and um, where you will um, pay back that um, that borrowed money in time. Um, and then with equity fundraising, um, it's when you are raising money from investors, typically, um, or or you know angel investors. Um, and you, for that money, you are selling a portion of your company, your equity. So 
that's kind of what they call dilutive funding, whereas um, loans and grants are non-dilutive because you're not giving away any shares of your company. You're still keeping ownership. Um, so it, it, it kind of depends what... Um, uh, what stage you're in, you know, but uh, this is a great way. Loans are a great way. Grant, grants are a great way to still keep ownership of your business before um, having to go to that next step of of diluting out your business. Um, so I'm seeing some questions and they're fantastic. Um, just a reminder, if you can put them into the Q&A box, it'll be easier for me to go through them a little bit later um, than in the chat. Um, but we will do our best to to get through to all of them. Um, and just following up from um, from that, uh, can, can I ask, you know, what what were you looking for funding for? Like, what were you intending to use this uh, this loan for? Yeah, so we were looking on we were looking to bring on a particular software that we needed at that point in time in order to um essentially create our product more efficiently and get it to a place where we could be selling and operational. So uh, it required bringing on this like fairly expensive software, getting training around this software, bringing on, you know, a contract pattern maker at the time. And then um what else? I think it was um, some materials around kind of like the R&D of finalizing our product. So that was sort of like we were in this final final stage of our, our product development. Wonderful. So it really helped you kind of to like push forward to, to launching. I believe you launched, was it April that you launched? Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, we got the loan in January. Um, yeah, I think it, like I'm trying to look on my laptop right now for the timestamp, but it was essentially a month and a half and um, we got redirected through WeBC. So I think it maybe was really a month by the time we were kind of like in contact with WeOx specifically. Um, so then we were able to use that funding right away. And then, yeah, we launched in April. That's, like, that's great. And yeah, it's such a short um, timeline. Um, all right. So back to Heather and Berlin. Um, so Obviously, this is a little bit different than going to um, your typical bank for a loan. So I'd love to talk about why should entrepreneurs consider applying for this specific loan program? Um, you know, what makes it different from a regular loan from a bank or a credit union? Sure. So I'll, hi I'll highlight a few of the basic differences. Um, I think I'll preface it by saying, you know, there's there's also... There's also something to be said for having a good relationship with your bank or your credit union, right? And a good business relationship. So um, this is not to say that it's not, you know, it's not a good idea to go through your primary financial institution. This is just another alternative. And it's also um, to sort of, co it can even be co-lending. So a lot of our customers have um, a WEOC loan and then they have some form of financing, maybe a line of credit from their primary um, bank, maybe another uh, women's enterprise center funding as well. So there's often many pieces involved, um, but I'll just explain kind of how with, with, most, um, with most banks and credit unions, traditional lenders in this space for kind of small loans under 50,000, uh, they're, they're often using a personal credit score as a benchmark um, and then making quick decisions based on your net worth and your, and your credit score, not necessarily looking at the details of your business, um, and your plan and your forecasts. And that's okay if you have a great score and you have great net worth and you can meet those parameters. But uh, if you don't, uh, maybe you have a lower score, maybe it's non-existent, maybe, um, especially if you're maybe a uh, new Canadian, a lot of people don't have that history and credit history in Canada. So those, um, those formulas don't necessarily work for everybody. And that's where we find a lot of people are missing out. So um, we understand that credit history is not the be all end all. And that's just one factor. We will, we do look at it. We look at it ourselves. We'll pull a credit report, but um, it's not what we base our decision on. Um, so I think one of the, uh, I'll share another screen here just to, to speak to our accessibility factors. So um, when we design this program here, we are looking at a couple things specifically, and this is based on some research we had done as to what people were finding their experience was like when they went into their, um, to their bank. So we wanted to make sure that uh, the process was transparent. So the eligibility parameters are clear. Uh, all the documents you have to fill out or sign or explain to you um, with, you know, our loan assessors that meet one-on-one -on -one with each uh, with each applicant. Um, <clears throat> we wanted to address some of those barriers. So 
Uh, at WEOC, we, um, we don't have a minimum credit score to meet, uh, to be approved for a loan. So we do have loan uh, recipients that have a zero score or no score or a very low score. Um, and what we do in those cases is we generally just want to have a have a bit more of a conversation. So if someone's got a low score, if they've got some items within their credit report that are maybe a concern, uh, we'll bring it up and we'll like we'll speak about you know what led to that situation. Are they rectifying that situation? Do they have a payment plan maybe for some items that are behind? So we really try to just get the story behind it and and work with that entrepreneur. Uh, we also have no minimum equity or down payment requirements. So. <clears throat> This is using equity kind of in a different way than we were just talking about for equity funding, but um, we kind of talk about this as the the piece that the owner has to put in. So uh, most banks, if they're say you're borrowing for a piece of equipment or something like that for your your business, uh, they might finance seventy five percent of that equipment and require that you put in twenty five percent to purchase it. So they can't always do one hundred percent of whatever project you're looking to fund um, or or you know asset that you're looking to fund. So we can do that. So we can we can um, lend up to 50k with no ne no necess um, no funds necessary from the entrepreneur to be putting in towards that purchase. Uh, we also wanted to make sure that they were easy to access. So because we are a national national program, uh, we have loan partners across the country. So uh, we'll be showing that and uh, talking about that in a minute, I think. But we have about eight partners right now in different provinces. So they're local. Um, business advisors in that province that you're doing business in that understand your market locally and they provide that guidance. I think Jess, you were with, you said WBC also worked with them, right? So there's some uh, connection with our, our loan fund partner organizations that work to, um, to assist entrepreneurs before they come to us for their loans. So it's kind of a, that's the, what the partnership is. Uh, so yeah, we also have referral partners like Startup Canada. So um, some folks that have gone through the Startup Women Programming with you have um, can be referred directly to us as well if they're ready with all the requirements. So that's really what we wanted to focus on in terms of um, getting the loans easy to access. Um, <clears throat> because we don't look at those, just you know, those two couple um, things like credit score and net worth, and we are looking at your, we're reading your whole business plan. We're looking through your cash flow projections to see if they make sense and they're realistic. Um, uh, it can seem like a lot of work, I think, um, just to, just, you know, it's, it's a, it is a longer process. So it could be a longer process if you don't have those items prepared, but that's really why we're doing that is that we want to be able to kind of look at every loan from um, there. Are every, every business is unique and every process is unique. And so we really want to take the time to understand the business and that the business itself can generate um, revenue to repay that loan. So that's really what we're looking for. Um, I don't know if there's anything else, Berlin, if, that I missed in there, but feel free to add anything if I did. Yeah, that's. Yeah, no, but it's it's great to like holistically be looking at the the, the business as well, rather than just the individual's, um, you know, personal um financial history it's 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 really great and also it's it's really great um practice for an entrepreneur to be going through you know creating their business plan and um, doing those financial projections um and if anyone has specific questions about that we will get to that in a moment um but you know it is a really great exercise as well for for folks to be able to go through um so I think it's it's a service for sure I have a question from an attendee Melanie it kind of goes into what we just talked about. Melanie is wondering, does it matter if your business is part-time and or home-based? And um, so in their case, it um, their business is a service. No, um, uh, for our program as well, we're doing uh, every industry, every type of business. So sometimes it's, um, yeah, it's, sometimes it's someone's full-time job. Sometimes it's not, and it's just a side project or, a, you know, something they're still working in another job while they're doing this. Um, uh, again, it just comes back to that idea of trying to be sure that the business activities generate enough revenue to pay the loan back. So we don't we don't want to get you into a situation where, you know, you're having to use your own your other income or your other funds to sort of pay back a business loan. Sometimes that's necessary in the first couple of months, maybe. But we're really trying to make sure that, um, you know, the loan goes into the investing into the business to generate the revenue to repay. So. But yeah, there's no parameters around um, that that kind of thing of part-time, full-time. 
Oh, well, and then, and Jess, um, you know, kind of looking at what all of those different um, pieces of accessibility were like, um, were any of these factors in considering this, lo lo this loan program um, as opposed to um, other options that might be out there? Yes, absolutely. I think, as I mentioned earlier, traditional banks, like I almost don't even bother with, like we're with RBC. I, I have chatted with them before, but um, I've never had a lot of luck when it comes to the traditional lenders. So we were definitely looking specifically into programs that were for women in business or other minority groups. And that we're looking at the business like more holistically, especially our business has been very research and development intensive, and it's taken us a really long time to get to launch. And we're really confident, you know, in our, our vision and the, the, the future potential of the business, but that can be a hard sell to someone who is really risk averse. So we were definitely looking at having someone who saw us more as a partner and like a longer term investment. And I don't think there are like too many programs out there like that. So it's, yeah, it's really a wonderful program. Fantastic. Um, and, and Heather in Berlin, um, can you um, maybe talk about um, how, how can entrepreneurs who might be interested in applying for this loan can go through that process? Yeah, I'll share another screen. I think I've got this one up. Yes, so like Heather mentioned earlier, the, they can apply to our loan fund partners. We have eight fund partners. This is the list uh, on the screen. Um, and for those, I, uh, yeah, I was going to mention if anybody is um, in any of the provinces or ter <clears throat> territories that are not listed here, um, the only one right now that we are not currently able to uh, lend in is Quebec, uh, but we do have a partner there, um, Evol, E-V-O-L. They are a provider of similar funding, so that's who we would sort of refer any interested people to in um, in Quebec. Uh, if you're in maybe uh, one of the other ones in New Brunswick, uh, we did actually just add a referral partner in New Brunswick. We have a Yukon partner as well, and we're working on some more in the north. So if you are in any of those other provinces, uh, again, feel free to reach out to us and we can we can find a way to make things work with you. Wonderful. Thank you. And I, I think it's definitely worth mentioning um, that uh if if you have any interest in this you have any kind of questions it, it's always safe just to reach out ask and you know to both heather and berlin's point if if it's not necessarily that they have a loan um provider or um supporter within your province or territory um they more than likely can point you in the right direction um so please always do reach out and and ask and you know it might it might be a no not yet sort of quest, uh, sort of answer that you get from them but um they're a fantastic organization to um get in contact with and, and see what other supports that they have as well um which we I'll, I'll ask you about the supports of <laughs> in a moment um but I think a lot of a lot of folks are probably wondering what exactly this process looks like um so when it comes to applying and then you know Heather Berlin when you you receive the the applications um can you talk us through that a little bit you know what are you looking for in the business plan specifically and the cash flow projections yeah so as we shared at the very beginning in terms of eligibility the business plan and cash flow projections are mandatory that is a requirement from the government of Canada as a funder so they are required, uh, but we wanted to just sort of give a few um, a few tips um, in terms of what we're looking for in a business plan. So um, <clears throat> there's about seven things I'll share. I think I have seven points here, um, but uh, we also have a blog post about it that I think uh, Miriam might be able to add to the chat so that people can check out. So it's sort of same same content, but um, just to cover off some of the basic pieces. So. We're always looking to see that the um, entrepreneurs covered a bigger picture of the industry. So <clears throat> whatever industry you're in is going to have some fluctuations or some conditions that might affect it. And then also to bring that down to the market at the local level. So wherever you are operating, um, kind of what are, what are the, the things affecting where you're living, where you're working, and that might have an impact on your business. 
we um, want to see kind of who your competition is in that in that either in the geographic area or also, you know, as we know, everything's kind of global now with uh, doing business online. So who's this who's doing this something similar to you, um, your most direct or indirect competitors? Um, the uh, most people have heard of something called the SWOT analysis analysis. So that's um, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. Uh, so assessing your businesses, um, your business versus others. That's a really important piece as well that we like to see. <clears throat> and then some of the other pieces are uh, around marketing and communications. So um, how are you going to market your business? How are you going to get word out? How are you going to advertise? Um, just sort of, you know, what's your plan in those spaces? And then a big one too that we often see, um, or we don't always see is uh, human resources and staffing. So um, a lot of business owners, feel that they can do, or they want to try to do everything themselves, right? It's a bit of a cost-saving measure too. Sometimes it's just the idea of kind of being in charge and, and taking taking charge of your business. Uh, but <clears throat> we want to make sure when we see a plan that um, it's thought of, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to deal with burnout. You don't want to um, take on activities that maybe are not your strength. So a lot of people get into a business because they're good at a particular thing or they make something or they, you know, have a particular skill set that they're selling. Uh, they're not always great at bookkeeping or managing or whatever the other pieces might be that are involved in owning a business. So um, having the right people on hand to take care of the pieces that might not be your strengths is also a good um, good plan to have. And I see Jess nodding. So that's yeah, <laughs> that's usually um, usually a piece that people don't always think about at the beginning. Um, and then the big piece, obviously, going back to those cash flow projections. So um, a good business plan does need that detailed financial info. So we'd want to see some um, statements for at least two years. And really there, you know, a cash flow projection is an assumption document that you're putting out, right? It is still still your best guess at the end of the day, but it is your your guess from your research that you've done. So us as lenders don't know everything about your business and and as much as you do. Uh, so we want to see that you have uh, informed assumptions, right? So giving that background of if you think you're going to bring in this much revenue in the first month, what is that based on? It's X amount of customers at this price point and for this many days in a week. And you kind of do the math and get that figure from there. So um, when we see plans that are maybe lacking some pieces, that's one that's often, uh, we often notice the numbers are there, but they're not really explained anywhere. So we want to see just how you got to those assumptions because um, it just helps us understand really that you've, Done the research and that uh, and where those numbers are coming from. Um, so yeah, so kind of in terms of do's and don'ts, I'd say you know those things are all things we want to see, and then the don'ts are really the opposite of that. So trying to make sure you don't leave out those key pieces. Um, don't cover you know just your best case scenario. Maybe show us some of the maybe a best case, worst case, something in between because you never know what's going to happen. Um, we'll see sometimes too plans that talk about potential risks, but no plans to mitigate those risks. So it's nice to see that as well, that you've thought about potential, um, you know, if things don't go quite as planned, what are some options that you can take to kind of uh, help the business down the line? Um, and then the biggest one is I always want to say, it doesn't have to be super long. So a lot of people think, you know, they've, I've seen ones that are 50, 75, 100 pages, uh, but I've seen great plans that are four pages, right? And it you know depends on the complexity of your business as well. Uh, but keeping it concise, covering the basic info is is um, is plenty. And I think for for our loan program as well, if you're an existing business um, and you're looking for like a loan to help you grow, uh, we do have a template for just sort of an expansion plan. So it's not a full full business plan, um, and that can be used as well. So it's just kind of giving us a background of what's been done so far, where you want to go, and what's the plan is for the new funding. Uh, so so those are the main things I think. Um, making sure that, yeah, it's it's not uh, full of any jargon or repetition. You know, you want to explain to um, whoever's reading it that, uh, you know, make it makes sense to kind of any audience. So those are probably the biggest points I'll share. Um, yeah. No, well, that's fantastic. That's <laughs> yeah. Um, I think it's such a great point about, um, you know, talking, like, it's okay to talk about uh, the those threats or those risks 
um or even you know talking about your competition so long as you are backing it up and saying well this is how we're going to work around it rather than just sort of like stating it because I think sometimes people when they do those SWOT analysis it, it it's it's kind of scary to be like this is what our threat is or this is what our weakness is but you can turn it around and be like but this is how we're working to mitigate that so I think that's yeah. a really really great advice uh, from you thank you um and and Jess you know having gone through this this process um can you can you take us through a little bit you know what what that was like I know you kind of talked about what that timeline was from applying uh, through WBC to actually getting the funds um in your bank um so but how did you prepare for the application are there any specific tricks that you learned that you think would be good advice for anyone applying for it yeah, absolutely. I think Heather has said a really like a lot of really great points. Um, so I would say the most work that's involved with applying for the loan is the prep work because there is quite a bit of documentation that has to be done. So um, I'll go through all of the things that I had to submit. So some of it is just, you know, simple personal information. So proof of, you know, your passport or your driver's license and then your resume. Um your personal tax information. There's the actual loan application that is um, just, again, sort of like personal information, business information, things like that. Proof of incorporation. So um, I'm not sure if there's exceptions around that, but I would imagine like anyone must call if you haven't yet incorporated, that would be an important thing to do. Um, and then if you have any structure when it comes to like, if you have people that hold equity or a board, you can include that just overall notice of articles. And then where I think I can add some value is um, <clears throat> obviously financial statements. So we have our balance sheet and our profit and loss statement. I would suggest if anyone, like if you don't already use a bookkeeping software, getting QuickBooks or something is really helpful and it's fairly affordable monthly. This year we got a bookkeeper for the first time, which was incredibly helpful also not super expensive. They just kind of come in once a month. Um, otherwise it can be really difficult to keep track of everything. And then it just makes putting these types of documents together so much more challenging because you're needing to go back and look at your bank and figure out what your revenue was, what were your expenses, things like that. So any sort of software like QuickBooks is super helpful. There's within there, you know, a um, report section and you can just generate your profit and loss and balance sheet statement really, really quickly. So if you have that, that can be done kind of like in a snap of your fingers. And then the cash flow projection is where you're going to want to spend more of your time, I would say. We typically like to have one on hand, regardless if we're applying for a loan or not, just to give us, you know, our own information as to how much runway we have. We don't necessarily would do three years out, but we'll always have about a year out. And then um, for the loan application, we projected another couple of years and we, depending on if people have done that before or not, we like to go back and um, almost do it as like, if we invested this much money in marketing and we assume we need this much money to get each customer, we'll therefore get this many customers. And like Heather mentioned, you can do a high scenario and a low scenario. So you know, if we had less money or if we, if we only hit this many people and what's your strategy, like, how are you getting those people? What type of marketing initiatives are you doing? How are you, how are you selling? Are you selling e-com or in store thinking about those types of things? And then for the business plan, we did it um, a little bit differently. So we submitted a deck and we typically as a business have two decks. We always have a pitch deck that's more visual. And then we have what we call like an investor's read through deck. That would be more for applications like this, where it's just more detailed and it includes all the things that we would normally verbally say in a pitch competition. So our business plan wasn't written at all. It was in the form of a deck, which I think as a business owner is just way easier to maintain. And like, that's, we're always updating that. And I would imagine for Heather and other reviewers, it's a little bit more fun to read than a hundred page mm -hmm. um, document and just, it's going to save you time. So really just staying to the important pieces. Um, a deck is, is basically like a PDF or like a PowerPoint presentation 
that is going through all the important areas of your business. So for example, you'll have your intro and then your problem and then your solution, your market opportunity, your business plan, your marketing plan, um, your finances, your ask, things like that. If you go online, there's lots of resources that will kind of walk you through what a traditional deck looks like. And then we added further information that are that's just specific to our business and around what we were specifically asking for the money for. And then the last thing that we had to submit that also you'd want to spend a little bit more time on is the detailed project plan. So ours was just a two page Word document. And I started off by explaining what our business was, because also if you're imagining somebody reading this for the first time, you want them to get a little bit of a debrief of who you are. And then I think it's always really important to focus on your why. So after sort of like intro introducing your business and the problem that you're solving, um, I think it's really important to stick to like, why are you do pursuing this business? Why do you think it's impactful? Why do you think it has scalability? And then um, we talked a little bit about where we're currently at, why we believe this is a massive market opportunity. So seeing that kind of future um, opportunity and then the second page is a little bit more specific into what our next milestone is, how we're going to achieve that. And then I had a breakdown of the proposed loan funds just in point form. So um, again, not really complicated, just really straight to the point, which I think was helpful and uh, nice and clear. And then I saw another question in the chat about credit score. So they do, you know, do that personal background check. Most banks will allow you to find your own credit score like for free just through your online banking. Um, I know RBC allows that. I'm assuming most of the other banks allow that. So that's a good way of just checking if that's something that you're concerned about. But as Heather mentioned, it's less of a concern for the WEOC loan. Um, yeah, did I answer all the questions? Really? Yeah, no, thank you so much. It's, it's so much uh, information there, Jess. Thank you. Um, I, I'm i seeing we have quite a few questions in the Q&A box and because I asked everyone to put them in and everyone has nicely done that I would love to get to as many as we can so um, Lynn is asking when do lo loan repayments begin once the loan is issued great question um, so it can be uh, tailored to whatever you need but I will just stress that the five-year term maximum is a maximum so essentially um, we offer options where if you if we issue the loan today, normally your, your first payment would start a month away and they're monthly payments for five years. If that's the length you're going for. Um, if you are in a situation where you need some kind of lead up time, maybe, or you want to do some, uh, we can offer kind of a pause on payments, maybe three months or six months until you start generating revenue. It just means that your whole loan has to then be paid back in four and a half years instead of five. So your payment's going to be slightly larger uh, if you do go that route. Uh, but we can we can do that. We can also arrange for seasonal payments. If you're a seasonal business, maybe you don't earn as much during part of the year, um, or we can do um, kind of balloon one-time payments if you have an influx of cash, um, which is a good point to mention. The loans are also prepayable anytime without any penalty. So if you do um, have the ability to pay it off sooner, you can do that, uh, or you can just apply extra principal payments uh, if you have the cash and want to do that. So um, yeah, so the, the typical thing is to be like a month after disbursement, but um, it can be it can be delayed if that's sort of the need of your business. Brilliant, it's great to play that there's an option for for flexibility there. Yeah. Um. So I. Uh, da, da, da. I can actually answer. I think the next two questions kind of go together. Um, yeah, right. And just you. notice like help tools to write a business plan or getting people to help hire someone. Um, and um help with projections so uh the list of loan partners that we did put out there uh that we work with are all um that's sort of that's what they're in the business of doing there's um business advisors that work in in those areas some help help with financing some help with just general guidance and growth and business plan writing projection writing all of that stuff and it is all um most I believe is free. So there might be certain programs or certain webinars and things that have costs associated with them, but the actual services that they provide are free for um, women identifying entrepreneurs. So that's a great place to start, I think. Wonderful. If you have, yeah. 
yeah, that's great. Thank you so much for for kind of lumping both of those in um, there together. Uh, there are some fantastic resources and supports out there. Um, so Lisa or and I think the other person that asked it was anonymous. If you need more information, please to reach out to either myself or my team member, Miriam, who is on the call today as well. And we'll do our best to point you in the right direction. Um, Lisa also asked uh, about using the loan to get incorporated. I don't think that that can be used for that. Uh, am I right in saying that, Heather in Berlin? Uh, I think it can. Yeah, actually, I don't yeah. think there's any. Yeah, yeah. Um, right. Because uh, you can, we we do loans for like you could be an incorpor you could be a, a corporation or you could be a sole proprietor or a partnership. So we do lend to all three structures. So you could start off as a sole proprietor, borrow um under that sort of structure, and then down the line, if you do or you decide you want to get incorporated, and you can use some of these funds to cover those costs. But I could be wrong. I'll just double check before I say that. But yeah, um, I, yeah, I think it can be used for that. Great. I'm also just adding into the chat, Lisa, um, some information on owner. They're great for um, yeah. incorporating and um, they are typically quite low cost as well. Yeah. So it just, yeah, it is it, legal fees, incorporation fees, business plan prep. So if you do want to hire someone, um, I know like our, our program needs a business plan to apply for the loan. But you can also submit kind of what I would call like a preliminary plan with just that sort of basic kind of information and then use our funds to develop your business plan further. So that is also an option in there. Wonderful. OK, great. Yeah. Um, so I think I think we've got the, the only other question we have here is from Ada. I'm asking about EFAL. I'm not sure if you know this information. Are they contingent on the 17 UN goals? I don't know the answer to that question. No, no, no. <laughs> Maybe Berlin? No? No? Okay. No. We Maybe can find out, website. though, and try to get the answer back yes. to her. Okay, great. Uh, Diane is asking, I live in Alberta. Do I start this own process with AWE or with WEOC or both of you at the same time? Oh, it's sorry. Yeah, so AWE first. Yeah. That'll be the first step. Yeah, so we don't actually... Um, so we don't have an option. Like, people... Um, people don't come to just Weox website to to apply. Uh, everything is done through either um, one of those loan partners or through potentially um, with 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 you at Startup Canada. So there is um, um, they would it's essentially so that they can kind of assess uh, review your your plan and projections first and make sure that it's ready for application status if they need to work with you uh, or they see any kind of holes in the in the thing that they want to help you with before it actually comes through um just to give a, a sort of figure on that like we've we funded about uh 200 and almost 250 uh, different businesses since we launched two years ago and i think we have only declined seven because they come to us almost fully fully you know like they're they're always in good shape because they've worked with that loan partner first so that's the process that we're sort of talking about with prepping prepping those documents um you can start working with a loan advisor at the loan partner if you're just even in the idea phase but you can be working with them that whole time up till application so that's all done through them fantastic thank you so much um, i'm just double checking that we have gotten to all the questions that we get to. Um, uh, Ramada would, would like to know, and it's going back to uh, credit score, um, how, how big of a, an importance does it play um, when, you're, when you're applying? Um, so for example, for newcomers that don't have that credit history. Um. Not much, to be honest. <laughs> I think what I like, what I like to say is, you know, we we're more interested in what is maybe on there than the actual number. Um, the way credit scores are determined in Canada is based on a number of things, and not all of those things are relevant to us. I I don't find it to be like a good measurement of someone's actual character uh, in terms of their history. So sometimes, and there can be mistakes on there. There can be, you know, um, the score can be be affected by things like too many inquiries, or the score can be affected by, um, you know, a lot of, in a lot of ways that not everybody is familiar with. And uh, we don't want to like, I don't say it's completely not useful, but it's just not nearly um, 
as important to us as a number of other factors. So that's why we will look at it. Um, and again, if there's some details in there about a specific thing, if, if someone has, you know, unpaid collection items or things, you know, loan, previously unpaid loans or bills that weren't um, paid and they were sent to collection agencies, that kind of thing. Sometimes those will be a bit of a red flag for us. We'll want to make sure that, that those are being dealt with. Um, but just kind of the score itself is um, not all that, uh, not all that important to us. Like I said, we have done um, loans for, for people with no, no, no score or very low scores at times as well. Fantastic. Thank you so much. I, I think we've got through a record amount of attendee questions today. <laughs> so thank you to our speakers and, and thank you to our attendees as well. It's always so great when we get questions from you so that we know exactly how we can support you. Um, you know, we only have an hour and so we, there's a lot for us to, to get through. Um, so we have a very quick feedback survey um, to um, ask all of our attendees how you found today. So while we have that up, um, I, I just want to give a massive thank you to our three wonderful speakers here today. Jess, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. Um, and Heather and Berlin, thank you so much for all the information um, on, on, this, on this program. Um, to all of our attendees, thank you so much for coming, for showing up today. Um, it takes a lot of energy to, to come to things like these, whether you're speaking or you know you're you're listening and you're taking down notes and, and going through all the different resources that we're sharing in the in the chat. So I uh, really do appreciate everyone that shows up to these. Um we have shared quite a lot of resources in the chat. Uh we will be sharing these resources afterwards uh, in the startup women resource guide. And um, we'll also put the recording of this onto our YouTube channel and we'll also follow up with the full presentation um, that um, Heather and Berlin had worked on for, for anyone that, that admits any sort of details, um, but you can always reach out to us as well if there's anything that you specifically wanted to learn, maybe you didn't learn, or ask again, reiterate, anything like that. We're always here to help you. Um, so thank you all so much for um, attending today. Uh, we're going to leave this open for a little bit longer just to make sure that everyone's able to answer the survey. Um, but thank you, thank you, thank you. And I hope you all have a great rest of your, of your Wednesday. Thank you, Isabel. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.